What's better than cookies and a big glass of ice cold milk? Well, for millions of Americans, especially children, there are plenty of things better. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein, and today I'm going to give you recipes that won't make the dairy farmers of America happy. Non-dairy recipes next on Soflo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience Soap Low Taste. Welcome Taste Nation and welcome to our home here at the Goya Kitchen at JA World in Coconut Creek. Somewhere between 30 and 50 million Americans have some level of lactose intolerance. That's a lot, right? And I don't think I've ever done a show here on Soflo Taste of special interest to those people. So today I thought it would be fun to do just that. After all, milk was originally intended for baby cows. So let's get cooking. I love cashew cream. I think that I would never miss a regular cream sauce again after tasting some of Amanda's cashew cream. It's really delicious. And I thought I would try to make a green cashew cream using basil and some roast garlic. We have um, raw cashews you have to soak them and it's really good to soak them overnight the softer the better so here I have the soaking liquid which we're gonna add to the blender as well and Amanda usually goes up about three quarters of the way up the nut but because we're heating this up and tossing it with some pasta um, I wanted to make it just a little bit more liquid I also have some roast garlic so these are whole heads of garlic with the top part cut off roasted in aluminum foil so they're really nice and soft so basically you just squeeze and get you see all that gorgeous soft garlic we're just gonna put that into the cashew cream the next thing we're gonna do is add the basil but I don't want to just add raw basil I want to blanch basil really quickly I have some hotter water over here I'm basically just gonna leave the basil because I'm gonna warm it up I'm not gonna cool the basil at all I'm just gonna go right into the cashew cream with the warm basil so let's go right into this boiling water and it only takes seconds and that's it so I'm gonna go right from here into the blender top. Add a big generous couple pinches of salt because like I said not much flavor in there you have to give it a lot of flavor and let's blend. So this should become really creamy. So there you have it. It's a beautiful basil garlic cashew cream. You can make this a lot thicker if you wanted to, like I said, without the liquid, but because we're tossing this into pasta, I really felt like I needed it a little more liquidy. But look how creamy it is, just to give you kind of a, an idea. Look how gorgeous. It really looks like a true cream sauce. And this is nutritional yeast. You can find it in any supermarket, usually in the baking section. But instead of putting it into my cashew cream, I'm going to sprinkle it on the top of our pasta. So let's go ahead and make the pasta. I decided on making a beautiful, kind of like a primavera pasta. And that's going to start out rather traditionally with a little bit of olive oil. I have some finely chopped garlic and finely chopped shallot going right into the oil. And then I have all these gorgeous vegetables that um, we blanched really quickly. So we have some beautiful little carrots and we got multicolors that we blanched quickly in a little bit of water. They can be raw too, but I love having uh, a little bit of a softness to it. Some little beautiful heirloom grape tomatoes, some raw asparagus that's the skinny kind, so I wanted to go raw with it. And then here I have some blanched green beans or French beans and snap peas as well. This will be very quick. Once the garlic and shallot become a little fragrant, I'm just adding a little bit of pepper now. Go ahead and add raw first. So we're gonna add some asparagus to the pan and then I'll add the tomato 
which will be a really nice balance of texture and flavor with this creamy cashew cream because of the acidity of the tomato. Then I'll add uh, some of the blanched green beans and snap peas, a few of the carrots. And I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest to this just to bring out a little bit of freshness. Go ahead and season it. I always have a little chicken stock around and I love it to add it to some of my pastas. All right, so let's add this warm pasta and some of the water going along with it, which is nice and starchy. All right. So we already have a beautiful spring vegetable dish here, or summer vegetable dish here. But to make it to where you want it to be, to get it to that level of creaminess and deliciousness, this is the best part of it. So we're gonna add little by little our cashew cream to get it to where we want it to be. And by the way, you can keep this cashew cream in your fridge and use it for all kinds of things. It would be gorgeous with any of your vegetable dishes, pasta dishes, um, fish dishes. Whenever you feel like you need a little creaminess, just pull that out. So here we have it. Just slowly start mixing it in. And it really, you can fool so many people with this because it really looks like you've added a little cream sauce with the roast garlic and basil flavor, which makes it even better into your pasta. And look how good that looks already. I mean, it's just beautiful. So just so you know, the more you heat this up right now, the more it's gonna to come together because that cashew cream has just a natural, very organic way of thickening. But look at this, look how, look how gorgeous that is. It's so rich looking, right? You never know that it was cashew cream instead of regular cream. And it's very stable, so it will never break on you either. Let's add a little bit of this nutritional yeast for fun. It's interesting, it smells a little buttery and cheesy, so let's add just a little bit of that. So for all of you out there that can't eat dairy, uh, like your milk solids, or your creams or your milks, this one is for you. It's delicious, it smells so good, and I kind of think it tastes even better. Come right back, I have two beautiful recipes that I have to show you next. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. I'm Melinda Harper for SoFlo Taste, and if you've been cautious about going out, trust me, you are not alone. But that's why we're here at Revisio Grill, to see what they're doing to keep their customers comfortable while dining in. We'll also take a look at the menu, sample some signature dishes, and follow all restaurant rules. Hello. We are joined now by Fernando Elias, the general manager here at Rodizio Grill, and he's going to tell us all we need to know. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure having you. So we made some changes to the salad bar. Uh, right now our salad bar is served by our employees. You can still make unlimited trips and have as much as you want, but we make the plate for you and, uh, and then we take it to your table or we take it to you while you're waiting for the plate to be made. And what other safety protocols are, are in place now? We're enforcing that our guests have to wear a face mask while in the restaurant. While they're eating, they're, they don't need to use a face mask. And also we have disposable gloves at the salad bar for them to wear and sanitizer stations spread out throughout the restaurant. And I have seen a few signs about social distancing. Yes, we do have signs spread in the restaurant. We have some tables that we had to close and we're trying to stay away from our guests as much as possible and still provide that excellent customer service. Earlier you mentioned table. Let's go have a seat at our table and taste some delicious food. Let's do it. Let's do it. Fernando, thank you so much for telling us how you're taking care of your customers. I know this seems kind of like an unusual time for a restaurant to have a grand opening. Why, why was it so important to open now? It was important to open now just because um, the Broward County gave us the permission to open and we were eager to open here at any point. We were having a lot of customers coming by and ask us uh, when we're going to open, so we decided it was the, the great time to open. 
tell us what sets your restaurant apart from other restaurants. So uh, Rodizio Grill is very authentic. We have our Brazilian side, the glazed bananas, the yuca fries, and the polentas, which is a Brazilian style cornmeal. This right here is my favorite. It's the pão de queijo, Brazilian cheese bread. My favorite too. It is, and it's gluten free. 95% of our menu is gluten free. And then we have Brazilian collard greens, mashed potatoes, and some homemade desserts and homemade drinks as well. Our signature is actually our meats. We have beef, chicken, glazed pineapple, we have pork as well, we have seafood, uh, we have lamb. So we have a little bit of everything a for our guests. So what do you say we sample some of that signature meat? Let's do it. Let's do it. So that right there is our fraldinha, it's our signature cut. It's beef tender, it's seasoned with salt only, and it's one of the most tenders. Mm. It has some wonderful flavor. I it, can't believe it's just seasoned with salt. Exactly. So good. My personal favorite is actually the picanha, which is this one right here. It has this fat cap in the back, which makes the meat very, very juicy and flavorful as well. And picanha is top sirloin? Picanha is top sirloin. Look how I know my meats. Tell us about some of these drinks that we have on the table here. So right here we have a caipirinha, which is a Brazilian national drink. It's muddle limes, sugar, and cachaça, which is a Brazilian spirit made from sugar cane. This is our signature Brazilian limeade. Okay. It's fresh limes, sugar, cream, strawberry limeade. And this is our Rodizio Grill signature Malbec. This wine is made only for Rodizio Grill, you can only find here. So if you want to have a taste of it, you got to visit us. Ah, nice. Fernando, thank you so much for this wonderful meal. It was definitely delicious and abundant. Thank you. And make sure to visit us at Rodizio Grill at Daniel Point. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back to the Dairy Free Show. But don't leave if you eat dairy because this stuff is so yummy, you're not gonna wanna miss it. The next dish I wanted to teach you is a delicious spinach and artichoke dip, one that is dairy free and that you'd never miss the dairy. So let's make another cashew cream. Now, this is gonna be just a very plain roast garlic cashew cream. And we're gonna make this one a little thicker because we're making a dip and we're gonna pretend that there's cheese in it and you'll never miss it. Add the soaking liquid, but we're gonna add less. I'm gonna stop there and then we can always add more. If you missed the roast garlic from my first recipe, this is just whole heads of garlic. The top is cut off, roast in aluminum foil until they get really soft and all of these cloves just come right out. I'm gonna season this heavily again with salt. And just so you know, in this pan, I have some caramelized onions that have been going for at least 30 minutes really good and caramelized. And this is some blanched spinach that um, quickly went into some boiling water, pulled out, refreshed in a little ice, drained and chopped. If you wanna use frozen spinach, you can do that and don't even worry about the blanching part of it. Then I've got some artichoke hearts that have been quartered. You can find these jarred, frozen, of course, fresh. A lot more work to do, especially for a dip. And then I'm gonna chop some fresh herbs, which we'll put in a little bit later. Let's get into this cashew cream. I said I was gonna salt it, and I meant it. So, a nice amount of salt, and let's start pureeing that. So, if you don't have a Vitamix like this blender is, and obviously you don't have one of these to push through, you can use just a regular blender, and you'll want to stop the blender probably every minute or so so that you don't destroy your blender and keep working the contents with a rubber spatula. You have to really work it. So let's see how this one came out. It's crazy, this looks like a bechamel. So look at how thick it is. Hmm, so good. All right, so let's move on with our dip. We've got the caramelized onions. Let's throw in that spinach I talked about already that has been chopped up a little bit and start mixing that in. So be careful at this point. If you've made your cashew cream and it has a lot of strong flavor and you've added the amount of salt that I did. I really don't want to salt anything in here. That cream, which is the base of this dip, has really enough sodium. Then go ahead and add in your artichoke and a nice amount of black pepper. And then finally, I'm gonna add some herbs to this. So for herbs, I have a little bit of rosemary, which I just chopped. I love tarragon and I think it would go really well in this. So I'm just gonna take some leaves and cut them up. And I also have a little bit of Italian parsley, which I'll cut up together.
All right, so we have our herbs. I'm actually gonna shut off the heat because I know that heating up the cashew cream makes it come together and makes it even thicker and it's really thick already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it in. And remember, you still have the water that the cashew is soaked in. If you feel like you're getting a little too thick here, you can always add a little bit of that water. Don't be so quick to throw it away. So let's mix all that together. So beautifully rich, so creamy. If you didn't tell people that it was cashew cream, I think that this would be a true surprise for most people. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this into a baking dish and throw it in the oven real quick, heat it up, and let's see how it turns out. So come right back. SoFlo Home Project is next, right after SoFlo Taste. Back to finish this recipe right after this. Now, back to Michelle at the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Welcome back to the No Moo Show. <laughs> Sorry, that was not good. Anyway, um, I have my dip in the oven. I think it's ready. It's getting a little color. Oh, yes. Beautiful. It took on a gorgeous caramelization on the top. Serve that with your favorite tortilla chips. And I, I just think that this is probably, mmm, might be the best dip I ever made. Next, let's make dessert. This recipe is a beautiful Thai recipe and it's called sticky coconut rice pudding. So I went and bought Thai sticky rice at the Asian market. Pretty easy to find or you can of course get it online. You basically put it in some cheesecloth or napkin and just wrap it up like so and place it into a steamer, nice and flat. And that's it. So we're gonna cover it, we're gonna steam it and it only takes the time rice takes to cook, which is 20 minutes. Of course, I already have some that I made last night and that's right here. So this is a two step process. The rice is still nice and warm. You take half a can of coconut milk and you combine it with some sugar and salt and keep tasting it until it gets to where you think it tastes just right. And then you're gonna wanna spoon that or pour right over, and I'm, I'm not gonna use it all. I think it's just a bit much for me, but pour it over that coconut rice until it looks like it's pretty well soaked. And then you can wrap this in plastic wrap or leave it the way it is and just let it sit. It takes a good 20 minutes to soak up completely. So from there, you take the rest of the coconut milk and we're gonna heat that up. And we've got a little bit of cornstarch and a little bit more sugar and salt. We of course also have some ripe mangoes for garnish and then some toasted sesame seed for garnish as well, which really to me makes the dish also taste really special. We're gonna take some of the warmed coconut milk and add it to the cornstarch and make a little slurry and then put it back in here. So let's go ahead and whisk this up. Keep whisking until it's all really well incorporated into your coconut milk. With cornstarch, you really don't wanna walk away because it will thicken and it will thicken fast. So let's go ahead and pour this back into our coconut milk mixture and we're gonna to wanna to keep whisking. Okay, so we're thick. So check out how thick we already are. All right, I'm gonna shut that off. Look how beautiful this is. It's really gorgeously thick. It's almost the texture of pudding. So I've molded the sticky rice with a little cup, a ramekin kind of thing. This is rice that's already soaked with coconut milk and then just pour over the thickened coconut right over the top. And let's garnish that with some sesame. We'll take a little mango, slice it up, and serve right next to this beautiful, how oh, pretty. And look how fresh that is. Yum. I think we've done good. Come right back. You're watching SoFlo Taste, the number one food show in all of South Florida.
Thank you so much for watching today. All of us need some non-dairy recipes in our repertoire. I hope you add some of mine today. So next week, I'm looking back at some of my best recipes for that headliner, that featured performer, the rock star of the poultry world, the chicken. Who doesn't need more chicken recipes? I'll give you a recipe for each part of the bird, the wings, the thighs, and even the fingers. Next time, I give you the best of cluck on Soflo Taste. Now it's chicken with design expert and my friend, Elena Capra, to see what she's got next on Soflo Home Project. Good morning, Elena. Tell us what you're doing. Hey, Michelle. Did you know that there are some areas of the home that are difficult to design? I call them design dilemmas. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, I show you how to overcome them and complete your project like a pro. So taste buds, be smart, be safe, and be well. And I'll see you next week. And please support local growers and restaurants. We all need it. Goodbye, good health, and good taste. Oh.